so it's an, it's the issue of Joe Biden on climate change. And there's an article from this great website. It's called therealsludge.com. They cover a lot of the environmental issues and um, it's run by uh, run by a guy named Alex Koch. He does a very good job documenting um, the issue of climate change and and kind of the, the the politicians' take on it and different politicians who are receiving money from you know certain you know donors and stuff that might sway their sway their positions and whatnot. But um, recently there was an article that that was released by. Um, by Reuters, I'm going to post it for you guys in the description box. But he, uh, Joe Biden, he um, he said that he is hopeful. Says Biden is hopeful for quote middle ground climate policy. So he's not even in favor of like the Green New Deal or anything. He's in five. He's in favor of something that's like probably similar to what uh, what um, Obama, President Obama, pushed for. And I mean, and his well, the article says his spokesperson um, says he declined to comment on Biden's emerging climate policy or his advisors, but said Biden takes climate change seriously. Quote, Joe Biden has called climate change an existential threat and as vice president was instrumental in orchestrating the Paris Climate Accord. Um it says on Twitter, Biden echoed the statement and said he plans to unveil policies that reflect the urgency of climate change. I'll have more specifics on how America can lead on climate in the coming weeks. Um, it says the approach which has this the approach which has not which has not been previously reported will set Biden apart from many of his Democratic rivals for the White House who have embraced much tougher climate agendas like the Green New Deal, calling for an end to fossil fuels with uh, use within ten years, which is something Alexandria Ocasio Cortez has pushed for. That could make Biden vice president under Obama a target of environmental groups and youth activists ahead of next year's primary elections. Um, Who's that? Oh, okay, so apparently they quoted somebody in this in this Reuters article who said um, it was a spokesperson for or an advisor. I'm sorry, an advisor to Biden on climate change. She said that I respect where they referring to the activist groups. I think one of them is probably referring to sun, the Sunrise Movement. Um, she said um, I respect where they are coming from. Uh, what we learned from the Obama administration is unless we find middle ground on these issues, we risk not having any policies. So, as usual, these people, I mean, he's be obviously being advised by a, by somebody that's, you know, either involved in some, you know, has been involved with some sort of, like, oil, you know, has been, has been compromised by the, by the oil industry, the oil companies, or the coal industry or something, because anybody that wants to take um, positions that are moderate, so-called, on climate change, they're usually compromised for those kind of things, compromised on those kind of issues, and they want to do enough that that they think is enough, but not too much that it's going to, like, offend, like, Republicans, God forbid, and, you know, make them call them radical or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that seems to be the kind of the gist of this article, the rest of it just talks about Republicans opposing what they, you know, what somebody like Biden would push for, let alone somebody to the left. Um, talks about Obama experts. Um, the same person, the, the person named the advisor, their name is Heather Zickel. She says later in the article said she is gathering policy advice on Biden's behalf from experts, including former Obama secretary, Ernest Moniz and Frank Verastro, head of the Energy and National Security Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Um, she also said Biden hopes to be able to use his climate policy to, policy to bridge the gap between younger and more progressive Democrats who want bold action on global warming and the working class demographic that fear losing jobs as the economy shifts away from fossil fuels. She, it's, she's quoted as saying... Uh, he will build a new climate coalition, she said. Unions, environmentalists are searching for common ground. We can't drive a common agenda unless we work together. Okay, so what that means is basically that Biden, whatever he's pushing for, he's going to eventually just want to sell out. And he's going to do, 
he's going to do enough that's just going to please both sides, but it's obviously, in my opinion, well, I don't think it's going to be pleasing both sides. It's going to be supposedly trying to please both sides, but ultimately it's going to give in to the demands of the of the oil industry and the coal industry, all those people. And I mean, they mentioned, the, his advisor mentions coal here, and or the, I'm sorry, the article does. No, I'm sorry. The article says the the advisor refers to the to the coal jobs or whatever that are going to be you know losing jobs and stuff. Actually, doesn't say coal, but they're referring to coal jobs. Um, so I was going to get to that again. I was, the the real sludge article that I referred to before. I just want to refer to that real quick because that's important and it's significant for when it comes to the advisor. I think it's the advisor that they're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, interesting. <laughs> Um, so, you know, pertaining to my point about this person, Heather Zickel, being compromised by the oil industry, it says Biden's climate advisor earned $1 million from natural gas company. Current 2020 frontrunner Joe Biden has a middle ground, quote, middle ground climate approach that will promote natural gas, potentially enriching his advisor's former employer. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? Uh, news broke on Friday morning that Democratic presidential contender Joe Biden is crafting a middle so-called so middle ground climate policy that will seek to d restore Obama-era environmental protections, focusing on rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement, increasing fuel efficiency, boosting natural gas, and deploying carbon capture technology. Um, but there's already a potential conflict of interest. Former Obama advisor Heather Zickel, who recently occupied a, occupied a lucrative seat on the board of the Texas-based liquefied natural gas LNG company, Chenier Energy, is now an informal, quote, informal advisor on climate change policy to the Biden campaign. This is the same woman I just I just quoted in the in the Reuters article. And it says the company has profited in recent years as the U.S. has increased its liquefied natural gas production, something the Obama and Trump administrations have encouraged. In 2013, while a climate and energy staffer in Obama's White House, Zickel, uh, yeah, Zickel met with Chenier officials twice while, while she was in the Obama White House, according to DSMOG, which is another website documenting um, climate change. Um, the year before, the year before, Chenier became the first company to receive an LNG export permit from the Obama administration, and the first to receive such a permit in 50 years. She joined the Chenier board in 2014, according to investigative reporter Nick Sergi. Uh, Zickel earned a total of nearly $1.1 million from compensation and stock, while a Chenier board member from uh, uh, 2014 to 2018. The Biden campaign did not immediately re return a request for comment, of course, because they don't want to respond to that. Um, Chenier's, uh, Chenier's Sabine, Sabine Pass facility in Louisiana was one of only two U.S. LNG exporting operations 2018. Exports are increasing rapidly as President Trump's administration has slashed environmental protections. When Trump visited Poland in 2017, he praised the nation for its LNG import from Chenier. The burning of natural gas emits less greenhouse pollution than burning oil, but during the full cycle of natural gas extraction, transmission, and use, it contributes significantly to the air pollution that is hastening climate change and it can pollute ground groundwater. Wow. So it says... Read a couple more parts here. It says, Chenier Energy is a regular donor to Republican politicians. How convenient. In the 2018 uh, cycle, election cycle, roughly 75% of the political contributions by the company PAC and individuals who worked there went to GOP candidates. Yet she was working, she, yet she was working for the Obama administration and then worked for that company and then now she's advising Biden. <laughs> It's amazing what people, some people will do for profit. Um, 
And this was according, so those uh, statistics are according to the data compiled by the Center for, Amer uh, for, for Responsive Politics. In 2016, the most recent presidential election cycle, 63% 60 of the contributions, or nearly 230,000, entered GOP campaigns. Zickel is reportedly seeking the advice of former Obama Se Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz and Frank Zarastro, head of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSI energy and national security program after exiting the Obama administration moniz as physicist joined the board of southern company a gas and electric electric utility and a major donor to republican politics as map Light, as map light reporter andrew perez pointed out on twitter csi is the, in the middle of a multi-year five million dollar grant from exxon mobile and received additional general support in 2017 from Exxon, Chevron, and the Saudi-based oil company Aramco. CSI once had the, had then Exxon CEO Rex Tillerson on its board. So these companies that are affiliated with people that are either giving advice to Joe Biden or are getting advice from for Joe Biden are very, very questionable. I mean, just as I read to you guys, I mean, this is an article that is detailing all the the interesting ties that these people that have any affiliation with Joe Biden, let alone somebody Joe Biden knows, is just, abs it's ridiculously concerning. I mean, that's, these people, like, they, it's amazing how much they will sell themselves out to to be part of a company that, that, I mean, you're, you were working for the Obama administration, but then you go and work for a company that gives donors, heavily gives donors uh, donor money to, to the Republican Party. So what kind of Democrat are you? See, that's why I can't stand this, this party affiliation debate of like, well, you're a Democrat and you're a Republican. And because you're a Republican, I support, you know, don't support you. You know, just because, you're not, you know, obviously they may not support a lot of their policies. But then when you come up with one policy and it shows that the Democrats and Republicans agree on it, which obviously is the case here because she's working for Trump. She was working for the Obama administration, the Democratic Obama administration. And then she goes and works for a company that gives a ton of money to Republicans. So where, I mean, there's so much, <laughs> there's a lot of crossover there, obviously. And... And then you know she's and then other officials that worked for Obama, uh, one of the one of the guys being a physicist, he ended up going and working for a company too that is also um, is also another gas company. So, and they're also involved in in some ways with you know big oil companies and then you know getting approval from Trump to to do what they want and all that shit. I mean it's crazy, man. Like I don't even I don't know what. All I know is that I don't, I, I never like to say like, oh, I don't know what these guys are thinking. They're stupid. No, they know exactly what they're doing. These guys know exactly what they're doing when it comes to Biden and every, all these people, all the people that hire these fucking people. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they think. The whole point is, is that do you not expect to get caught for it? Because Joe Biden is not, he's not an idiot. He knows people are going to look into this stuff at one, at some point. But he obviously doesn't care because he's got an advisor that wants to get a moderate approach to climate change and global warming. But in reality, this girl, she's not even working for the betterment of the country or the or in the environment. She just wants to do the middle ground so that it, you know, so it, it, it adheres and kind of appeases the oil companies while seeming like, oh yeah, we're totally in favor of combating climate change. But in reality you're not. I mean you're just you're bullshitting, you know? And we can see when the, obviously as usual money talks. You give money to somebody, you know, you give them donor money or you you employ them, whatever, you know, obviously that same company that she that the Heather Zickel was working for, you uh ended up doing a deal with the Obama administration and you know, Obama let them do, you know, certain stuff. They gave them a lot of um a lot of the uh, benefits in in doing what they do. When it comes to when it comes to oil and gas, uh, and the, I guess in this case specifically gas, but um, and then uh, ironically she ends up going and working for them because she was probably pushing Obama on the, on doing those things, and then conveniently oh they give her a job. I mean come on bro, <laughs> it's so obvious these people just they they have zero morals or ethics. It's all about who's paying me. Okay, who's you know who, who can I benefit from the most of. 
for the most from okay great and then and then after i use that after i go and you know, have that experience with these companies i'm going to go back into politics again and then advise people on on an issue on doing so doing going on a certain going in a certain path on an issue when we sh definitely shouldn't be going towards that path on that specific issue this pertaining to climate change and where you know you definitely should be pushing for more uh, regulations whereas this person wants you know you know biden to bridge the gap between the unions and and environmentalists but in reality that just means you're gonna sell out so that's what it really is. It just comes down to selling out and just uh, catering to the oil companies while pretending to be in favor of, you know, environmental protection.